and Eudora did her part too. Soon after, the Queen learned there'd been a gathering of the clans, and Ivor had indeed spoken on her behalf. She could only hope the elder Breckenridge's had swayed Groover Hoog as well. Rickenrig's Chuve. <laughs> oh, I truly like the sound of that. Your Grace, I need to speak with your quartermaster. Hey, excuse my elvish, but I can't drink- Ugh, Reynard's doing no doubt. He doesn't like the men to- To be blunt, ma'am, what Reynard himself needs is to get good and bluted for- So, I have a proposal for you. A shipment of the best dwarven mead and- Hmm, good point. Oh, give my thanks, dear Queen. A few more days of that- I trust you'll arrange the deed. Uh, of course. No worries. You didn't ken how happy I You're a Zigrini. Aye. You're thinking of Yarpin. Cousin of my cousin. Left my hackam when a decent enough dwarf, but never could conform to our basic tenets and laws. Though, admittedly, we've so damned many it's hard to keep them from leaking out your ears. Is it that bad? Hmm. I'll put it this way. Among human folk, you can't steal, brawl, murder. But I'm no one to complain. The Zilgrins are well to do, one of the rich. What do you mean? Bah! Nay worth your time. I didn't mean to bother you, sides. Your elder. I'll skip the. All in all, though, he's near as scared. No conflicts. Ha! <laughs> ha! But Brewer's got his weight. Why? Round a hundred, if it weren't for that. Yes, I remember. With all due respect, Your Grace, your workshops. I feel enlightened, Gap. We shall return to this. No skin off, Mab. Yes, my lady. You choose not to follow you- To fight in the field, with you. But what of your home? I have no kin in Norsberg. No soul left for me there. I understand. Other matters await my- As you wish, my lady. Hey ho, how's my- You and Reynard? Like a cat and a hound. Yes, yes, your jests are easily understood. 
Far more. That's probably true in your royal high and mightiness's case. Will you answer my question? <sighs> we get along because we must. Though it'd be far easier if he pulled up. Haven't heard a truer word. What was that? Nothing. It's time I attended. Yes, Your Grace. How go things, Reynard? Well, you might say. Tell me more. I don't pry into his. If I'd prefer it if my commanders worked together more. Your Grace. Oh, Reynard. He. I must disagree. I fear. Yes, he stopped thieving for now, but only because it's convenient, so to speak. Gascon isn't a changed man. Yet he has a unit of armed men, without which we'd be much. Agreed. The strays are. I only fear they might turn on us. It's time I attended. Isabel? Apologies. Thoughts consume. Since we left Edurn, you've seen. I've seen many wars in my time. All ugly, all. Nilfgaard. That's what it does, Isabel. They seek here to repeat the rape of Sintra, the slaughter there. Yes. I then you know of what they're capable. After Sodom. I took an oath never to take part in another war. Senseless death, I believe. Forgive me, ma'am. You speak with my soldiers a good deal. Said so yourself. Hmm. Corporal Larkin, ma'am. Do you know... Of course I know them. You know them. But did you know that in fleeing Lyria, the corporal left behind a new... And true, the captain has no wife, no child. But he's not seen his brother in five years. Never one. Allow me to guess. You shall now tell me Tegan abandoned his... No, ma'am. Count Caldwell's men murdered the lieutenant's kin. Retaliation for his joining your rebel... Enough. You've made your point. Yet even were I to order them to return, they wouldn't listen. They know they've got nothing to go home to while Nilfgaard occupy. Duty calls. Of course.
Count on us, Queenie. Ivor will be a wall at your back. Stout! Ah, you thunder and do I told you to hold your horses or you'll shake the hitch loose. Oh, now you're a bleeding expert, are you? You overloaded the damn cart, that's why it's busted. A wagon lay strewn across the middle of the road. Behind it stood others. Some loaded with gold, jewels, and other valuables. An odd caravan. Meave said. They don't look like merchants. Nay, they ain't. Gabor answered. Dwarves of the Ferens clan, carrying gifts for the Drake. Remember Keltilus? When he took roost here, Ferences fought him for near a century. Then the dragon got weary of fighting, and they realized he weren't going nowhere. Gabor managed to douse his brethren's fiery tempers. But the wagon still lay across the road, blocking all traffic. Queen, said Xavier. It is an easy repair. I have the two. Xavier did indeed make quick work of the problem. Within moments, the wagon was rolling smoothly down the road, good as new. Well, shaft me, your highness, said one of the dwarves. Your engineers got a paint like st I appreciate the offer, but I cannot accept coin for helping a traveller in need. Common decency it is. Huh? In our times, decency ain't common at all, but as you wish.
pillar of smoke rose above the mountains, and a sooty aroma filled the air. Fire! Gabor said, then took a deep sn- The Lyrians quickened their gait. Soon they saw a town fully aflame, and a roaring, furious dragon above it. That's your Keltinus? Gascon asked, shielding his eyes from the sharp glare emanating from the city. You were right. Perfectly harmless. Then the king was get his knickers in a bunch, the dwarf said, grabbing his axe from his belt. Queen, we got to make haste to the rescue. Smother your fears, Sir Dwarf, they proclaimed. Reynard! Meave called out. Have our men wet their cloaks for a modicum of fire protection. We move as soon as they're done. If we don't make haste, Ake will be reduced to smouldering plate. Your Grace, they are but common soldiers. To fight a dragon. I know. While Reynard went to pass on the order, Meave turned to Gabble. This dragon, has it any weakness? Fear not, said the somber dwarf. Except a fondness for raw meat. Meave nodded and swallowed dryly. Stifling her fear, Meave gave the order to attack, and her soldiers rode into the flaming city. From up close, Keltalis looked even more terrifying. Though enormous, he moved with shocking agility, like a lizard scurrying over sand. With one swing of his paw, he snapped the necks of three dwarves, then bisected a fourth with a powerful bite. After that, he turned his attention to the Lyrians. Lord of you! He said, twisting his bloody moor into a horrifying smile. God! Your Grace, we're taking losses! That was the white of an eye from half a league away. Ah, shite! He's real! 
Legion Nur! Watch out! Give me a time. they are to target. The vermin's diminished, but be wary. Each blow it answers still with wrath and fury. We must strike now! Fear not! We shall achieve our goal! That day, many Lyrians perished, either to the dragon's all-consuming fire, or to its flesh-rending claws. Yet their sacrifice was not in vain. That's right! Howl, you scurvy snake! Shouldn't they have attacked us, eh? Meave, that's Vavrenik, elder of the town and all the Ferences. My regards. Eh, tain't so bad. If to be honest... When I caught wind some human queen come to Mahakam looking for aid, I said a crocus would sprout twixt my cheeks afore I'd vote aye on that. Gonna be a fear to look in my breeches after, but changed my mind. After what I saw today, what ye did for us, you have the support and- Thank you. Faced with the Nilfgaardian- uh, Forgive me for interrupting this tear-tugging scene of interracial reconciliation, but I can't hold back no longer. Favrenik! Double chase! What happened? I can as much as ye. Meaning, squat diddly. Sheep shank! Three hundred ye- What's done's done. Got to think about the future. The Drake's just taking a breather. Meaning, we have not much time. He heals like an alchemist's pup. And the nearest guards are miles away. Aye, that's what I thought. What? Jest you- I can your tired through the fight, didn't want to risk casualties, etc. But remember, the beast sleeping on a bed of gold and all belonging by right to breather, of course. But if uh, quibbling. Uh, 
I admit that does alter my calculations. Putting it featherly? Blood poured out of him like a leaky bladder. Fine. Can you see the like? Oh, hey, Vavranek, Vavranek. This lady's gonna make your rump a regular crocus garden. Aye, Queen's doing us a great service. So, where- North are here. Meave bid farewell to Vavranek and set out on her way. Did her way lead to the dragon's lair, you ask? Shh. Let's not spoil the surprise. Blowing it a little. Trust a Borheed and what do you get? Brown, red, gold, every. Wait! I'm coming with you! Gotta. Keltalis Lair was indeed impossible to miss, as would stand to reason, for any space capable of containing a dragon must be enormous. The Lair's Moor, a black triangle cut out of a vast plain of snow, loomed from afar. Confirming the dragon's presence was the powerful odor emanating from it, one of sulfur. My father oft said, never should you count pelts till the hunt is through. Meave said, dismounting her horse. It's all the more true when you hunt dragons. He's wounded, yes, but one puff of flame, and we shall be not legends, but caught. The Lyrians crept across the dragon's threshold. They walked single file, shields raised, watched by bats hanging from the ceiling. Kelt Come to finish Wh what your poison began? <sighs> Wait, Meave said, dropping her sword. What poison? <laughs> Keltalis laughed while squeezing his bleeding side in pain. So they didn't tell you? Lousy munchkins. Hey! Watch your tongue! Gabor yelled. Sage! I didn't care anything about it. Keltalis looked the Lyrians over mistrustfully with his snake-like eyes, then began to tell his tale. The caravan Meave had met on the road was different to the others. This time, Keltalis's meat had been pickled in a special brine, one spiked with poison. As the dragon lay curled up in pain, Ferenc dwarves entered his lair and smashed his head. So if I understand correctly... Meave interrupted. You're female. Correct. Same as you. <sighs> as if on command, all Lyrian eyes turned to Gabor. Can you look at me? We didn't a peek under his... Eh, uh, heart... Eh, uh, itch... Deal. If I may, Reynard interjected. These revelations about Keltalus' sex are undeniably fascinating. But I'm more curious why the Ferences stooped to such a dishonorable deed. That's easy enough to guess, Meave said. They were afraid the dragon would soon demand more tribute to feed its young. So they decided to strike preemptively. A wise and noble deed, Ake cried. Evil must always be nipped in the bud. To the Ferences' misfortune, they delivered two smaller doses of poison. Infuriated at the sight of the broken eggs, the dragon gathered its strength and flew to the nearest town. Meave saw for herself what happened then. And now... When judging my subjects, I would sometimes not know who bore the greater guilt, said Meave. But as ruler, I had to reach a verdict, often a harsh one. The queen returned her sword to its sheath. This is not my land, Meave said. Nor are these my subjects. 
I don't have to choose the lesser evil. Meave, Gabor hissed. Prover will be fury. Let him. And you, dragon, swear me this. When you heal, you shall leave Mahakam and never return. You've my word. And my gratitude. Meave was about to leave the cavern when the dragon blocked her way with its tail, then gathered a smattering of valuables at the queen's feet. Each would be the prize of the Lyrian crown jewels. News that Meave had spared the dragon which had killed dozens of dwarves did indeed enrage the inhabitants of Mahakam, the Ferences in particular. But when the clans considered driving the Lyrians from the pass, Elder Vavrinek opposed it. No matter what happened after, he had sworn Meave his undying gratitude. Your Grace, tis not right. Calm down, Sir Aeg. The deed you've committed, most foul. As the good book said, know that I never stand idle. Yet I cannot stop you from doing so. Thus I must leave. I refuse to play any part in the wickedness you perpetrate. Sir Aeg. Farewell, Queen. And may the gods have pity on your soul.
Meave squinted, the better to see the scene. Several dozen dwarves had gathered on the cliff overlooking the chasm. All were turned towards a ramp, at the peak of which a hairy head peeked out of the barrel. The long, pointy nose and ears left no doubt that it belonged to a gnome, the first Meave had ever seen in her life. Help! Save me! The gnome yelled. They aim to kill me! Cast me in the chasm! Shut your maw! barked the... Meave leapt from her horse and, ignoring Gabor's objections, scrambled up the ramp. Oi! You're not allowed! Hey, damn it! What do you think you're doing? I think it's obvious. Pre ah! Ah! Whoa, wench! You have no such right! Yes, and a cruel sentence it is. <laughs> Better to ask what he didn't he do. Arrived here with his peddler's wagon full of tricks and gadgets. Went from house to house, praise his rubbish palms that go off in your hand. Beard growth formula that makes your hair catch fire. Music boxes for the kiddies. Once cranked, they never plow in stop. You needed but to loosen the screw in the back and... Shut your maw, ye roaster. Doesn't it matter all that? Cause we'd have forgiven it if he hadn't broken our sacred rules and hallowed customs. Which ones, if you don't mind me asking? Enter the smithy, cap on his head, held nails between his teeth, and poured fruit syrup in his beer. Raspberry! Blech. Just the ones, and but a few drops. You got nothing to explain your villainy, scoundrel. Not a thing. And that's not even the worst. Saved his highest crime for the end. He was in a mine. And he whistled. Oh, oh, aye, that's bad. Shouldn't have done that. Hi, he did. Whistled through his teeth and hummed in harmony, a, a long warble. We all heard it up and down the shaft, and our grand elders were clear. Death's the punishment. Death by barrel roll. Your land, your laws, I shall not argue with them. But perhaps there is another way. Can a bail be posted? Hmm. Well, the law does allow for something of the sort. But I don't see how that job is worth it. Oh, I... He is. He is. Willing I am to take him at his word. Does that suffice? Aye. But just so we're clear. No returns... No refunds. Now get the hell out of that barrel, you wee sh... My lady, I haven't a way to thank you. That we've yet to discuss. Perhaps first we should learn each other's names? Um, hi. Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> what a prat of me. Uh, Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas Beckenbauer. Uh, to friends, Bibi. Meave. Queen of Lyria and Rivia. A co queen? Cows in the corn, tell me on it. Uh, your Majesty, obeisance due. None necessary. Protocols for use at court, not beyond it. 
An inventor you deem yourself. Am I right? Most assuredly. <laughs> Though, truth be told, the dwarves saw no ingenuity in my craft. <laughs> Fiery bursts in the palm of your hand. They shall be in fashion one day to your mind. Oh, nay, nay, just a bit of misfortune, that's all that was. Y you see, I mistook mercury fulminate for saltpeter. The vials stood beside each other, see? The details I need not know. But one matter I am curious about. Could you construct a bomb that would explode when desired? For instance... Well, of course I can! Why then? You wish to show your gratitude? You must join my ranks. Assist me to defeat Nilfgaard. D defeat Nilfgaard? <sighs> Pure ambition, that is. But I'd have been a... And thus, for the first time in Lyrian annals, a gnome enlisted with the army. And though Barnabas Beckenbauer was diminutive of body, this new recruit would prove his worth on more than one occasion. Your Majesty, allow me once again to express my undying gratitude. You're most welcome, Barnabas, but please, we haven't need for any formalities when speaking alone. I, uh... Well, well of course, uh... At the moment, have... Oh, so kind, so wonderful, you should ask. See, I've, uh, I've ever had an avian fascination. Uh, for birds, you see. Their wings, bones. I beg your pardon. Yes. Yes, I, I'm learning to fly. 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 You've not misheard. I, Barnabas Beckenbauer, will be the first norm... Oh, what am I saying? The first mammal to free himself of the soil's bondage. Hmm. Ha! A detail. This is no time to be petty. No, but frankly, my preparations are far advanced, and I'm rather optimistic about my design and prospects. I've calculated every trajectory, every force. It all works out. Just need to do a few more field tests. Did you have volunteers? Naturally, I must stay on my first prototype. The Sky Licker, I dubbed it. Oh, Your Majesty, truly. Oh, no, he's dead. The landing, it was rough. And then a bear sauntered by, uh, didn't help any. Anyhow, as he died, the dwarf swore he regretted and... <clears throat> I see. But the next time you request I try one of your inventions, I'd ask you to remind me of this. i like to know... About me? <laughs> Why not start at the beginning? Oh, right, right. Uh, uh, well, uh, I was born in the distant south. Soon as I'd passed 40 winters and could strike out on my own, I left the family. My native parts. Indeed. A rather long while. Did the south simply not suit me? Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. It's just staying would have meant stepping into my father's shoes. Then, forging blade after blade. Not for me, that. No. No. Nature. The world so rich in mysteries. By building bombs that explode in the hand for... Ah. As those bearded fellas say, Mahakam wasn't built in a day. <laughs> Besides, uh, nobody was seriously hurt by those malfunctions. Time I attended to other... Hmm? Ah. I'm pleased to see you again. Duty calls, of course.
You change your mind, last. let me know, eh? Got the barrel ready and waiting. Every year, more monsters crawl out for spring cleaning. a snail en route to the mine, share a wee bite with him. Never! Now hold on! Horn ye some hoots first! Makes for... Remember, if you pass it... The blizzard's blowing in. Your grace, perhaps we'd best pitch camp and wait for clear weather. Tain't a bad idea. Said we might be waiting a week. Then we march on. We've no time to waste. While we ride to and fro begging aid, Nilfgaard grows in power. We must obtain reinforcements as quickly as possible and liberate our home.
Yes? Thing about slings, they hide well. Don't buy this. I live to serve you. I'm a waste of time for one like me. Learn.
Neve rode on in silence, endeavoring to work out the length of her exile thus far. A scout's call tore her from her reverie. Your Grace! You must see this! With a grave mien, the soldier indicated a track in the snow. The hobnail bootprint was all too familiar. Neve, the scouts had learned a Nilfgaardian caravan with an armed escort had recently arrived in Mahaka. The invaders had brought with them chests brimming with gold and jewels, then exchanged these for the finest Mahakaman forged swords and spears. A scout gave me one of the coins the black clads had used for payment. Upon the coin's back, the Lyrian Eagle. They pay with gold from my vault, the Queen said through gritted teeth. For arms that will cut down my fighting men and subjects. We might yet pursue and hunt them down, said Reynard, a spark in his eye. And make certain Eddar he never lays hands on those weapons. You might, again, piped up Gabor, who had been listening to their exchange. But you might also recall. We Mahakamans are neutrals who assure all guests within our borders safety. True, formally speaking, the Nilfgaardians have passed outside them, but attack them a stone's throw from our gates, and you'll see Brewer's rage come out his ears as steam, and out his arse as fire. No war's outcome has been swayed by a few wagons of arms. No matter their quality, said the Queen, vaulting into her saddle. Yet if we turn Bruver against us, I dare say we shall never wrest our land from black-clad hands. The Queen's men regretted her reluctance to attack, but none tried to dissuade her. They knew her too well. 